Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ralph here, and in today's video, I'll tell you the comparison between the four big banks in Australia. Alright guys, before we start the video, I'll just like to ask for your support by just simply liking this video and also subscribing to our channel. I'd just like to put a disclaimer stating that I'm not a certified financial advisor nor a financial expert. So guys, um, if you're basing your financial decisions uh, on this video, I will not be liable to any of the decisions that you're gonna make. All of the things that I'm gonna say in these videos are based on my experience and through my research as well. So before you guys pull off the trigger and choose the banks that you're gonna put all your money, I would definitely suggest that you do your own research as well. Alright guys, so on topic of this video is the comparison between the four big banks here in Australia. If you've been living here in Australia, you already know which are the four big banks are. So basically they are Commonwealth Bank, Westpac, ANZ or ANZ, how the Australians call it, and NAB or National Australia Bank. I'm just going to weigh the pros and cons on choosing between the four big banks here in Australia. Punta muna tayo sa pro on choosing uh, one of the four big banks guys. The first thing I can think of is it's easier to set up a bank account with one of these banks. Due to the fact that you can see them pretty much everywhere if you go to the mall or if you go to the city you can definitely find an office of Combank Westpac, ANZ, and NAB just around the street in Melbourne City. Also, they have a better customer service. I believe that Combank offers a 24-7 uh, customer service. I'm not really sure about the other three banks, so I'll let you guys do the research on that one. And also guys, uh, it's easier to link your savings account if you have your account set up with one of the four big banks here in Australia. And now let's go to the cons guys on choosing uh, between one of the four big banks here in Australia. So basically, you get a lesser interest rate as compared to the other smaller banks which offers a higher interest savings account. The other cons that I could think of is basically it's harder to make decision on choosing which one do you like. Basically, due to the fact that they offer competitive rates with each other, so it's really hard to justify which one is the best. So I'll let you guys do the research on which one will suit you best depending on your situation or on your needs. Alright, so let's just start off by checking uh, each bank's interest rates on their savings account. Um, fair warning, by just looking at the numbers, they don't really offer any competitive rates as compared to other banks that you'll see online. So I'll let you guys do the research on that one, but we'll make a different video about it on suggesting which one you could use as your high interest savings account in the future. I'll just go through this one real quick. Um, I won't really go through the conditions or revert to the um, per annum percentage. I'll let you guys do the research. You could use Google or finder.com.au to find out um, their variable percentage on their savings account. Now for Combank, um, it's 2.20% per annum for the first five months. That's their maximum variable rate per year. And then um, for ANZ, it's 1.95% per annum for the first three months. And um, Westpac offers a bit higher compared to the other two, which is 2.31% for the first five months. Of course, um, 
condition supply, so I'll let you guys do the research in that one. But NAB, in, on the other hand, has a different approach. So it's 1.86% per annum. It's lower compared to the three. However, their condition is a bit different. Um, to reach this bonus interest rate, you must not make any withdrawals. You must deposit at least one time per month in order to achieve these ones. So I myself um, use Snap as my daily account. So I don't really know about this um, savings account because I have a different savings account. I'll try to make a different video about it. So guys, like this video and hit the notification bell as well so that you guys will be updated on my future videos okay and subscribe smash the subscribe button okay all right so let's go to aspect of choosing your banks basically you're gonna look into your banks if they charge a monthly keeping fee which i find absurd so i'll go through nab first so for now, they won't charge you a single cent. Set up your account with them. Unlike with Combank, they will charge you $4 every month if you have your money less than two grand every month. However, that $4 of keeping fee will be waived if you put your money for two grand or more in your bank account. And um, for Westpac and ANZ, they charge around $5 or so keeping fee into your bank account if you have less than two grand in your savings or in your daily account. However, like Combank, they will waive that fee if you have at least two grand or more in your bank account, okay? Now let's go to withdrawal fee. So what I mean is that when every time you use an ATM, some banks um, charges like a specific withdrawal fee, which is really annoying, to be honest. But anyways, let's go with each bank. Combank, if you're using a CBA ATM, of course, they won't charge you a fee. However, if you use like different banks like Westpac, or ANZ, they will definitely pay for using a different ATM. So, but if you're if you've been living here for quite a while, you will definitely see that Combank ATMs pretty much everywhere. Um, unlike with the other three banks, they're a bit harder to find. Right, another aspect is that if you have your banks with NAB, ANZ and Westpac and if you're using a Combank ATM, Combank ATM doesn't charge a fee regardless of which bank are you using for. Except for if you're using an overseas bank, definitely um, Combank ATM will charge you a certain fee. I'm not sure how much uh, would they charge. Sometimes it will be like 2.5% or sometimes it will be like a standard cost of $2.5. So I'll let you guys do the research on that one. Let's go back to the other banks. Uh, Westpac, I'm just looking into my computer now. So if you're using um, Bank SA, Bank of Melbourne, you won't be charged any transaction fees when you're using their ATM. To withdraw for ANZ, um, you can only use it with Combank and ANZ ATM. Your ANZ ATM card with other banks, you'll definitely get charged with an ATM withdrawal fee. So let's go to NAB. Um, it's the same thing with ANZ and Westpac. If you use your own bank's ATM, you won't be charged a withdrawal fee. However, if you use uh, the other banks, except for Combank, you will be charged with withdrawal fee. Um, I'm not sure how much would it cost, maybe $2.5. Um, I'll let you guys do the research on that one as well. In regards to location of the ATMs, I believe uh, Commonwealth Bank uh, wins this category. Just simply the fact that if you guys been living here for a while, you will see lots of 
Commonwealth Bank uh, ATMs around the area, especially in city. Unlike with Westpac and ANZ or ANZ, you'll see some, uh, but it's not really as common as compared to Commonwealth Bank. And with NAB, um, I myself as a NAB user, they're really hard to find. So thank God uh, Commonwealth Bank doesn't charge a withdrawal fee if you use other banks. Uh, as long as your bank is located inside Australia. Just an honorable mention, I'm just gonna put ING onto this conversation. It's not part of the four big banks here in Australia, but they do offer competitive savings rates as compared to the other four and good service as well. So for the keeping fee, uh, they don't charge any cent for it. Unlike with uh, Westpac, Combank, and ANZ, they charge around $45 if your savings account has less than $2,000. Their savings account is really competitive as compared to the other four. They offer 2.30% um, maximum variable rate per annum. But um, to have this um, interest rate, uh, you need to meet their conditions as well. And uh, basing on what I saw onto their website, you need to at least deposit uh, at least one grand or $1,000 every month into your savings account. And as well as making at least five purchase each month onto your daily account with ING. So if you manage to meet those two conditions, you'll definitely get the maximum variable rate of 2.30% per annum. I hope I answered all your questions and also if you managed to reach at the end of this video, I really appreciate it. And please subscribe to our channel. It's Ralph and Ann's channel. Also, like the video guys. Please like the video. It definitely place our videos in YouTube algorithm it will definitely help the channel to grow thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you on my next video have a good one guys